Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, my name is Belen Blanco, and I will be the coordinator and lecturer of this subject. But before starting, I have to say that it's going to be partially. So I could disappear in four weeks, eight weeks, six weeks, I don't know. The only reason is because I'm expecting a baby, and honestly, I don't want you just to be, uh, well, to have this experience of know how baby is going out in life, okay? <laughs> so <coughs> the lecture later is going to be determined by the head of the department, and at this stage, I have no idea who is going to be. I'm trying to get the best one, but it has been three months since I advised, and I have no idea. So, at this stage, I cannot give you more information on that. So, sorry. The consultation times is going to be totally flexible. So, if you need any time with me, just write me an email and we will set a, an appointment, okay? Because previously, I usually say, well, Wednesday 12 to 2 or whatever, and most of the time, clubs with your classes. So, if you have any concern, any question, whatever you have, just write me an email, okay? The tutor is going to be Abraham Rafin. Tutorials are going to start next week, and he will cover all the tutorials. So independently of the group in you are enrolled, you will have exactly the same tutor and exactly the same thing, okay? So, Apologize for being sick, but I cannot be standing. <laughs> and well, hopefully by next time I can put the chair a little bit up because I'm tiny, and if I hide there, you are not going to see me. <laughs> so I want to know a little bit more about you, okay? I'm interested if you are in finance or in accounting, and uh, what is your background? So the reason because of that is just to adapt a little bit where possible the subject, more to accounting or more to finance, okay? So just yes, let's start with you. So just give um, the details of your name, your background, if you are in accounting or finance. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Maxine. Yeah, I major in finance and accounting. Okay. Is your last uh, term or? Um, it's my last third term. Okay. What about you? My name is Roberta Gorella. I'm from Italy. No, really? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I studied history and now I'm doing a master in uh, economics for government. Okay. Are you a exchange student or are you yeah, enrolled here? Exchange student, yeah. Okay. I mean, this information is important to me just to adapt the. Uh, all the things. Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Veronica. I'm from Italy as well, from Sydney University. I studied, uh, I'm an exchange student, studied mm -hmm. economics and management during the bachelor, and now I'm doing the master in international management. Okay. This is my second year, and hopefully the last year. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Thank you. So we will keep going. Okay, thank you. My name is Jun Kuo, and I'm a professional accountant, and this is my last semester. Okay, so basically, accounting wins wins. <laughs> um, my name is Yang, I'm majoring applied finance. This is my you are the exception. <laughs> if I just took a lesson before, <laughs> you are the exception. Okay, so your second semester, you said? Second okay, semester. thank you. Oops. Uh, my name is Shirley. My name is accounting and finance. 
-hmm. Okay. Thank you. So your last one. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. My name is Mohammed. Uh, I'm from Saudi Arabia. This is actually my third semester. I'm doing my uh, master's in mm -hmm. Thank you. My name is Kofi. This is my first semester. I'm doing my master's in Okay. Thank you. So. My name is Simon. I'm from Denmark. Exchange student. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm studying economics and management. Okay. First semester. Okay. Why you look, you came in winter? Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. I mean, my background is Spanish, and, but I wouldn't go to, well, <laughs> to a country where <laughs> two winters in the same year. So, I mean, three winters together, wow. <laughs> what about you? Uh, hi, I'm Adrian Ruth. Uh, I'm taking Master of Government Finance. I have a program in accounting for my, from my third semester. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm from Maldives. Uh, my name is Nasrum. Mm -hmm. I'm studying uh, Master of Finance and Business Economics. I previously uh, studied accounting as well. Okay. Yep. And it's your last semester? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, this information is crucial for me, and I will tell you later what. <laughs> thank uh, you. Thank you. My name is Dan. I'm from Indonesia. I was studying uh, accounting before in my first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. What about you? My name is Johan and uh, I'm studying in the program and this is my last lesson. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Jess. I'm actually from the University of Adelaide in Singapore. Okay, <laughs> it's quite fun, <laughs> but. Okay. Okay, thank you. What about you? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Gary and uh, I'm from China and I'm a major in supply finance and this is my second semester. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so, and are you in the last semester or? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Jasmine. My I'm doing my master's in applied finance. Mm -hmm. I'm from India and I'm in my second semester. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, 
how many of you have to do later research in financial statement analysis? Not so many, because most of you are already in the last term, isn't it? Okay. I mean, this is crucial for me just to adapt, especially one of the lectures, because it's going to be important for the the second part of the subject. Okay. And more, you, most of you are more or less accounting, except here in this cluster and the other cluster that are from finance. So if you are lost a little bit in some concepts of accounting, let me know, please. Okay. <coughs> so basically, what is the objective of the subject? So we really need to understand the information. I mean, how many of you took a look of financial statements of any company at least once in your life? I hope that most of you, if not all. The thing is that what is this information? What this information says? Or in other words, what this information really says. Okay, because the thing is that we have to read between lines. Because not all the information is reliable, not all the information is clear, and we really need to know if this information is good or bad to be, to be able to see to say this company is good to invest or this company is bad to invest. For example, if you go to the notes to a company, how many times do you have to read these notes to be able to understand not 100%, but only 50% of the company, just to see what's going on? I'm sure that more than once, because Usually, firms tend to obfuscate information. They don't want to tell what's going on in the firm, but not only because they want to, for example, do bad things like um, avoid taxes or engage in fraud, also because of competitors. If the competition knows more about you, your advantage is going to be decreased. So we really need to know because we are studying for that, what's going on on the company. And we need to know more than a regular investor. I mean, something in the street. We really need to know what's going on, not only with the numbers, but with the disclosure. And hopefully, at the end of the, the semester, you will understand how difficult it is to understand financial statement information. And how easy it is for them to mislead investors, even if they comply with all accounting rules. Okay? So this is the objective of the course, understanding accounting information. It's nothing to do with doing balance sheet or net income or cash flows statements. It's taking this as given and interpret them. Read between lines, going beyond the words and the numbers mm -hmm. to see what's going on in the firm. So there is one book that I put there that is required, but honestly, you don't have to buy this one. The only reason because I put require is because we are using this for tutorials. So all the questions are taken from these books. Well, from this book except three, three tutorials. So basically it's going to be for six weeks or seven weeks. So please buy it second hand or take it from the library. Okay, don't spend 100 bucks on buying a book that is only for tutorials. Because what I did is that, well, if you took a look of the slides, you see that there are a lot of slides. What I did is just to put all the concepts here 
So you don't have to go to any book. The problem is that financial statement analysis is, uh, well, it's quite hard to find a good book for this subject. So I took something from here, something from Palepu, something from the CPA. So you are not going to have exactly the same in only one book. So if you can, yes, don't spend this money in that. You know, spending on it. Yes, going to have dinner is going to be much more enjoyable than spending this, okay? <laughs> because it's not going to be, I mean, crucial for passing or even high, even have a high distinction in the subject, okay? So, the thing that I think that you are much more interested in, evaluation criteria. You will have a midterm exam. It's going to be on week eight, and it's going to be on lecture time. What are going to cover is going to cover weeks one to six, which means five lectures. Because valuation, that I will take you talk about this later, is not going to be included in these clusters, okay? So it's going to be five lectures and the corresponding tutorials. And basically, it's not going to be a multiple choice because I don't think that in economy there should be any. I mean, anything is black or white. Almost all the things are gray. So multiple choice for me has no sense. So what I usually do is put two questions, one covering the first half and the other one covering the other part. And um, I have to say just from now, these questions are based basically in practice. Okay, I will give you one example. In general, it's one example taken from the lectures and you have to interpret this. Okay, so this course is not about memorizing, it's about understanding and be able to criticize if you, for example, are an analyst later, you will have access to ratios and you will have access to information. The thing is that how to interpret this information, this is not in the internet. This is what you have to learn here. And this is what I will be asking in the subject, okay? So it's going to be 12th of September. Uh, hopefully I will be in there by that time. It's my last day before maternity leave, so hopefully. <laughs> but in any case, uh, unless there is an emergency, I will prepare the, the exam because I know more than the other one what I covered and what I, I didn't, okay? So don't be afraid of that because everything is going to be under control. So this has not to have any negative impact on you, okay? Then there is going to be a group assignment. The delivery date is the 15th of October, which basically is week 11 of the course. Um, and it's going to be on valuation. So you have to prepare a report where you calculate the fence value. In this case, it's going to be quantas. okay? 10% presentation is going to be from week two to week seven. And for that, I created this. Web page that I don't know why now is closed. <laughs> no, shouldn't be closed here. So you have to add your names here and please don't be afraid of being the first week because I will take into account that you are presenting the first week with no any other reference of other groups, okay? Because I have seen that here there are a lot in later weeks but nothing in the first week. So please don't be afraid of being the first ones. Okay? I will take into account that you didn't have any references. 
So basically what I did is just to create several topics. For example, today we are going to talk about information asymmetry and what I expect from you. I expect that, well, there are going to be like groups of four, maximum four, you can be three for presentations, two, because at this stage the number of students is quite uncertain. So you have to present the concept first. For example, information asymmetry, you will have like a couple of slides saying what the information asymmetry is. Okay? Just talk about the concept. Why? If you are able to summarize the concept, you are able to understand it. Okay? And find a real case of that. For example, if there was a, a case of manipulation, if there was a case of uh, misleading investors, there was a case of information asymmetry. So you will take this case and explain this from information asymmetry perspective. Okay? It's clear for everyone? I mean, this is important because we are starting next week. So if there is any questions or... So basically you have to prepare a PPT slide presentation with the concept and then apply this concept to a real case. It could be whatever. It could be newspapers. It could be a research paper. It could be something that you find in the internet that, yeah, well, check the source, please, <laughs> because there are a lot of rubbish in the internet. It could be, I mean, whatever, there are no restrictions here. So where do you find the case? It's up to you, okay? So you can use whatever you think that is relevant for, for the case. And I have to tell you that it's going to be quite likely that I have to change oops, two weeks here. That the one of 29th of August is going to be the 5th of September. I mean, just to swap them. And the reason being for that is because the 22nd of August is quite likely that someone from Pricewaterhouse is going to come to explain cash flows because they couldn't do it on 29th of August. So I think that is good because they are someone from the real life talking about real cases that they have. They were auditing, for example, this cash flow statement and they will show you, for example, some cases that they have, the trickies, red flags they found, and blah, blah. I think that is interesting. So those of you that are the 29th of August will present the 5th of September. Okay? Sorry for the change, but I received the email of confirmation, 80% confirmation this morning at 8. So I couldn't do it before. And then the final exam. The final exam is going to be in the exam period, but it's not going to be an exam like you are used to. It's going to be a case study. So I will give you the case study two days in advance, and you will have to, well, to understand the case study and prepare a report that you are going to write in the exam period. It's going to be like two pages covering all the concepts that we have seen in the course. So it's not going to be like um, 10 questions about each of the different concepts. It's going to be a case study just involving everything. So the case study that you will be given before 
is going to be exactly the case study that you will have in the exam. The question that you will have before is going to be the question that you will have in the exam. Okay? <coughs> so let's talk about the group work a little bit. So the groups are going to be of four. Again, it could be of three, depending on the number of students. And doesn't have to be the same people of the presentation, okay? <laughs> Sometimes you try with some people, things don't, doesn't go well, and you decide to change. It's not a problem, okay? So the group presentation does not have to be exactly the group of the same. So it's up to you. And you have to analyze quantas, financial statements of last year, 2017. And basically, you have to apply one model that we are going to see later and write a report of two pages about the firm's valuation using this model, okay? This time you are going to be, I mean, you are going to use only one model because I found out last week that in the second part of the subject, you have to apply the four that we are going to see. So I was asking the four of them, so it's like having exactly the same two times in your life has no sense. Okay, so you are going to apply only one model. That is one of the more common models used in valuation. And the final report is the 15th of October, and you have to submit online, and the hard copy has to be in the uni by 4 p.m., okay? The presentation. Yeah. 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 And the same for the presentation. You have to give me a hard copy and a soft copy just before the presentation. I mean, if we are starting at 10, please, by 10, give it to me. So you just to have a read at least before you present it, okay? And the presentations will be assessed as you go. I mean, you have the presentation next week, you will have feedback by the end of the week, okay? So you know how you are doing, which means as well that those of you that are presenting on week seven, given that have less information asymmetry, I will have higher expectations, okay? If it makes sense. Because the first week, you, um, well, you don't have any benchmark. The second week, you have the presentations that have been last week, and so on and so forth. So I assume that you are going to be a little bit, a little bit more prepared on week seven than on week two. I think that is fair. So each presentation will be assessed weekly, okay? So there are going to be groups of four. Again, it could be two or three at this stage. There are going to be four presentations each lecture session. You will you have the four topics that I assign for each presentation for each week. It's going to be maximum ten minutes. Okay? So the ideal will be maximum forty minutes of you, because otherwise I will not have time just to cover the lecture. <laughs> okay, and it's going to be in lecture time. Okay? So just give me the presentation before the, the presentation day, which means that it can be at 10 in the morning, the same day. And what are you required? To find a real example from the concept of previous lecture. So we are going to cover something today. Next week, we are going to start the lecture with a, a summary of the key concepts and a real case for each of them. It's something that I was doing before, but given my experience from 
last two semesters, I think that uh, is going to be much more relevant if you do the effort. Because otherwise, my experience is that you don't spend time going to the cases that we have seen in class. For example, last year, I put exactly one of the cases that I have seen in class with an example that I solved numerically. And even with that, more than 50% of the people was not able to solve the question properly. I mean, was able to solve partially. So I think that maybe if you spend the time doing that, you are going to be more aware about how important the case studies and real cases are, okay? Again, real cases are really, really important. If you are able to find a real case for a concept, it's because you understand the concept very well, okay? So basically, you have to prepare a presentation with a summary of the concept. I mean, if the concept is information asymmetry, what information asymmetry is? Just a summary, one or two slides, no more, okay? Present a real example. Again, real example could be something that you find in the newspaper, something that you find in a research paper, something that you find the source is up to you. Because if I limit to you, like you have to find it in the newspapers, maybe you are not lucky for some specific concepts, okay? So it's totally open. You have to apply the concept to something in the reality. You can take financial statements from a company and discuss, for example, about cash flows, okay? So, and again, the discussion, okay? You have to discuss about this case study. For most of them, I think that the most easy way to go is going to the financial statement. For ratios, I think that the most easy way to go is newspaper, especially with profitability. There is something all, and there is always something on profitability. There is always some issues, especially with earnings per se and this kind of races. So the deadline before each lecture. So you have to submit the soft copy in my uni and the hard copy to me, okay? One thing is that if possible, those presenting each day arrive five minutes earlier just to put the PowerPoints in the computer, so we are starting time, okay? Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, ten minutes. So the limitation is on time. I mean, you can have 40 uh, slides and you can take ten minutes. I could have one slide and I could take ten minutes. So there is no limitations. The only limitation is the time. I don't like the limitations. It's because I put a case study or something that is open. Because you will have to solve every problem in the real life like this. Okay? So no limitations. Limit the time. And the only reason is because at 12, there is another lecture. So we cannot be in the room, okay? Any other question? Yeah. Uh, sorry, say that again. So, um, the example of this journal presentation, does it have to be happening uh, recently? No, not really. For example, I'm using some examples of Enron, and Enron happened 22, in 2002. So it has not to be like uh, recent. 
If you go to newspapers, maybe it's going to be easier to find something that is recent, but no, no, no. I mean, it has to be relevant for the concept that you want to show. And sometimes you will find this even in the 80s. So no, no limit of, has not to be like novel or something like this. I don't want to put limitations because I know how hard it is to find real cases for the concepts, okay? And I know that and I will assess it accordingly, okay? And I try to put the topics like very general because if I put like some, something really, really specific, you are not going to be able to find a real concept, a, a real uh, example that is appropriate. If you, for example, find any travels on finding a real case or something, let me know. Because again, I mean, I know that it's not easy, like straight away, just put in Google information asymmetry, real, real example, and it will appear like uh, 10,000 uh, results, okay? So you have to spend a little bit of time on that. I mean, it's difficult. It's, it's not extremely difficult. <laughs> I mean, it's not like a straight away, like uh, you put in Google and you have the results and put it in the PPT in that form. You have to go to the case. And especially, it's going to be easier if you understand the concept. Okay? Any other question? No? Clear? Maximum four people. Around two minutes, two minutes and a half, yes. Yeah. So for example, one could present the concept, the other one could introduce the case, the other one could apply the case, and the last one could discuss about the conclusions that we can get from the case. Organization is crucial in the presentation. I, I will value especially the clarity of the presentation. I mean, how straightforward you present to the to your colleagues. Okay? And this basically means go go to the point. So it has to be something easy to follow. Remember that your colleagues though will not have the real example in advance. So you have to explain them, as I always say, like your colleagues were three years old people. If you do it in this way, it's going to be really clear, okay? Any other question? No? Okay. So what is the lecture outline? Today, I will give you an introduction. So basically, I will cover information asymmetry, and the two main problems of information asymmetry, and what are the intermediaries of this information just to ameliorate the potential problems. Next week, we are going to see analysis overview, basically meaning why it's important to know where the firm is operating. It's not the same having US firm than Australian firm, than Italian firm, or firm from, for example, Germany. The background is totally different, risk is totally different, and the accounting rules are different. So you will have exactly the same reality just imagine that you have one firm, the same reality, the same way to operate. The numbers are going to be different if this firm operates in the US or operates in Australia. Nothing changed except the rules, okay? And this is something that we are going to see in the second week. Third and fourth week are going to be ratios. So first, 
we are going to know how to calculate ratios that you may already know, but the most important thing, how to interpret them. And we are going to build in ratios, and later we are going to analyze the accounting numbers that, that we are going to plot in these ratios. Okay? Then the equity valuation and cash flow analysis, there is a question mark there, but it's because I was waiting the response from Pricewaterhouse people. Seems that they are coming, so I will swap them. Okay? Then the 5th of September, we are going to analyze financing activities and later the investing activities and operating activities, which means that we are going to go to the numbers. We are going to know, for example, if the firm made any adjustments to these numbers to be able to interpret what we learned previously in their ratios. Okay? The class test is going to be on week eight. Tutorials are starting next week. Week eight, I decide not to have tutorials because otherwise it's exam and tutorials too much. So we are going to skip that one. And the main assignment is going to be week 11, okay? Presentations from next week until week seven. And the last week, you are going to solve a case study. That is going to be one of the, previ the, the previous case studies of last semester, okay? Just for you to have an idea on how the case study will look like, what is expected, what do you have to cover in the case study, so you are better prepared for the um, case study solution in the exam period, okay? So, today, I will take the time because I cannot see from here. There is no clock here. Oh, I'm lost. <laughs> so I will put them over here then. Because I always have a WhatsApp in the room, but oh. <laughs> Okay. So I'm going to talk about the importance of financial accounting information. And the second part, I will go very briefly because this is something that we are going to split in the different lectures. So we are going to come back to lecture one many, many times in the course, okay? To this second part. But it's much more for you to have now in the case that you want to have a proper summary on the different parts of the financial statements, okay? So what is financial accounting? Financial accounting is the information that firms report, okay? And why this is important? Because the main goal is to reduce information asymmetry. For example, before coming here, I didn't know who are you, well, some of you have pictures, but most of you have pictures of cats or landscapes, so doesn't mean, I mean, it means a lot of me, to me, but doesn't, I mean, doesn't help me just to put your face, okay? <laughs> so, now that you are here, I reduced my information asymmetries, okay? Now that you are here and you know me, you reduce your information asymmetries for some parts of the course. And this is the purpose of firms. They provide accounting information. Basically, they provide the financial statement analysis, the financial statements at the end of the year, some of them quarterly. Others, they have to fill some other accounting information that they have to provide to regulatory bodies on a regular basis. So all this information is to reduce the information asymmetries between what and what? Between the managers 
and shareholders, between the investors, the externals of the company, and the internals of the company. It's the only way that a firm has to show or to say what they are doing. If they are doing good, well, sometimes they say that they are doing good and they are not doing so good. But you are here to learn and distinguish these cases. Okay? So information asymmetry basically is when one party has more information than the other party. I know, for example, more of the case study that you will have at the end of the course than you at this stage. Two days before the case study, you will have full information because you will have the case study. But until then, there is a total information asymmetry for you. Okay? And you know more than me about, for example, the effort that you are putting in the subject. I can say, for example, wow, this student put a lot of effort because got 100%. And maybe it wasn't the case because previously had a lot of experience working in accounting. It could happen. Or it could happen that, wow, this person only got 50. Seems that didn't spend so much time. No, maybe not. Maybe was the more hard worker student I have in my life. You know more than me on that. So each party has different information. The thing is that they have to share this information, put this in common to know more about the transaction. What transaction mean? means? buying or selling the company, for example, okay? So, I will put a video that even is not accounting, it shows perfectly what I'm, I'm talking about. Because I assume that most of you have tried to buy a second hand car sometime in your life. Oh. Yes, mate. What can I do for you? Uh, I'd like to buy a car. Okay. Any choice? Yeah. I think that was very, very clear what information asymmetry is. Sometimes you have to go to a basic example to understand the concept better and then to apply to accounting, for example. At least this works for me. So you could try. Okay. So basically, what is the lemon's problem? Why do you think that second-hand cars, even they are almost brand new, drop their price respect to the brand new cars? If you see a second-hand car that is almost two months old, you will say, why they are selling this car? Obviously, I will not pay the full price. What's wrong with this car? If you see a 20 years old car, you don't expect much, but still, you will always have the problem of, is it a good car or not? The same with companies. Is it a good company or not? For example, Enron case. Share prices went up a lot, so people were buying and buying and buying, saying, wow, this company is really good. It's super profitable. Suddenly, there is a shock. They lost everything. Is this a good company, a bad company? For that, you have to be able to interpret the financial statements properly. As the video said, you are not stupid. You are here to learn the key points to understand and distinguish those firms that are pitches than those firms that are lemons. Okay? And you have to read between lines. You have to be critic. So, um, most of the time, what I found is that you are afraid to be critic, 
to criticize a fan. Don't be afraid of that. You have to do that in order to be able to understand the fan. Don't accept as true everything that you read. Because most of the things that you read are not true. So, basically, we need credible information and good communication channels, and the government can play an important role of that, with that. If you have two companies, A, that is a company that has financial statements that are not audited, and there is no regulation supporting these financial statements. And you have firm B that is audited with a clean opinion, and it's supported by regulation. Which one do you think that is much more credible, A or B? B, isn't it? A priori. Which doesn't mean that A is a bad company. You have to distinguish between them. Being audited does not guarantee that you are a better company than those that are not audited. If you think in that way, a company, a company that is not audited knows that it's not audited and knows that investors may have some problems with that. So it has two options. Select to be audited or prepare a really, really good report not to be penalized because of that. Because this company will know that investors will look more carefully to these companies. So again, anything is black and white. We can think, oh, I will prefer the audit company, but maybe not because of this reason. The company ex ante knows that it's not audited and knows that investors will put much more attention on this company than others. So for me, it could be white. For you, it could be black. But I'm not, I mean, my understanding is not better than your understanding. The most important thing is how do you discuss about the problems, interpret the problems, and propose the solution. Okay? For example, the same case study or the same question in an exam could be solved in two different ways. For example, last year I was asking, which do you think that is better in this case, US GAAP or IFRS? More or less half and half went to each of them. Doesn't mean that those that respond US GAAP are better than those that IFRS. But you have to discuss about your decision. This is the most important thing in the course. It's not about choosing one alternative. It's about supporting this alternative and discussing why this alternative is better than the other. Okay? If you see some companies and you see some analyst reports, some of them recommend sell, some of them recommend buy, some of them are neutral, who are better? You have to put in perspective and analyze on your side, on your way, and say, well, for me, this will be buy this company. For me, this will be sell this company. But if there, there is not agreement, doesn't mean that it's bad. Doesn't mean different opinions. And different opinions are that different. You have to discuss about why do you think that this is the correct option for you, okay? So just imagine, well, not imagine, you will do it later. Most of you re really, really soon because you are in the last year. You have to look for a job. You 
uh, 1,000 more people, unfortunately. And HR, human resources, does not know anything about you. What do you have to do to mitigate this problem? What do you have to prepare? What do you submit when you are looking for a job? A CV. Okay? You say all what you have, your experience, education, skills, and some of you things that you don't have. Okay? So how can you demonstrate, how can you show to the employer that, to the employee that this is uh, true? There is no way. The only way is just saying to him or to her, take the risk, I will be employed three months. If you are not happy, fire me. It's the only way. It's the only way that he or she know or has the option to know you and to verify that all the things that you're writing in the CV are true or not. It's because of this probatory period or confirmation period or whatever. And this is the way as well to serve yourself. If you are confident on who you are, you have to say in this interview, okay, I know that I'm good for this job. Hire, hire me. If you are not happy after three months, fire me. This is a good signaling for the employer saying, I, you are confident on you. Why I shouldn't be confident on you as well? Because you are taking the risk as well. You could go for another job that is a permanent position or go for a job that you are saying in advance, I will work for you only three months. If you are not happy, I will leave. And this is a way to reduce information asymmetry. And this is the way to reduce as well the moral hazard. Once you are hired, you will have a lot of incentives to work less or not to work at all. For example, I always say in Spain is something that is called permanent position. You work for the government. Once you are hired by the government, anyone can fire you. But to get this position, you have to work really, really hard. And you have to study a lot. You have to compete with other thousands of people that want exactly this position. What they do when they get this position? Nothing. Because they know that anyone can fire them. Can, how can you mitigate this moral hazard? One, change the law and being able to fire them. Two, for example, asking them to work harder otherwise to reduce their salary is another way to go. Yeah. Sometimes it's not um, possible because for example, what if you are not a public company? And there are a lot of description in options. I will tell you now. I get an option that is going to expire, let's say, in one year. I cannot exercise this option before. And I will provide relevant information to the market one day before the expiration date. I will not be working during this year, but I will announce like, wow, I will acquire this firm that is really good. Firm size goes up, I exercise my option, I go on holidays, and I was on holidays one year already. So there is a lot of description around that. And this is because there is nothing good or bad in economy, or especially here in accounting information, because everything has the dark side. 
the options, remuneration by options were intended just to um, ameliorate this problem. The reality is that any solution that you propose, you will find a way to escape. Okay? And this is the problem. How to find the perfect contract? How to find the perfect way to ameliorate this problem? There is not the perfect way. Okay? All things have good things and bad things. And that something that works for one company may not work for other company. For example, let's say that you have the same remuneration package in one firm that has a lot of risk because it operates in, a firm, in an industry that has a lot of risk while the other does not have risk. And you are, for example, offering them some bonuses. You will get this amount of money if you are able to sell 100 units. It's not the same to sell 100 units in one industry than in other. So what works for one company may not work for other company. Okay? This is why this is important to know where the firm operates, what about the competition, what about the strategy, which countries, and so on and so forth. And this is the first step that you need to know about a company. For example, one company that was operating during the global financial crisis in the States, obviously, the situation for this company was not the same than the situation of a company in Australia, that basically, during that period, the, here there was not a crisis at all. Again, situation, market, you, know to, you need to know many, many things of a company before even starting to analyze the accounting information. You need to know every other information that is not accounting that is crucial to understand the accounting information. Okay? So, the managers know more about the future of the firm than the investors. How can we mitigate this? Providing financial information. The thing is that how reliable and how accurate is this information? This is something that you have to distinguish. Okay? So, the, both the adverse selection and moral hazard are results for information in symmetry. Adverse selection is that, well, I don't know if I will buy this company or not because I don't know if it's a peach or a lemon. Moral hazard is I don't know how hard the other person is working for me. So adverse selection involves inside information. Manager knows more than shareholders. Managers know if the firm is doing well or not. The moral hazard involves effort. As investor, I have no idea if manager is working really hard for me. If he's working, looking at the long-term value instead of short-term and his or her own profitability instead of company's profitability. Both of them are different problems inside one more general problem that is information asymmetry. What are the consequences? Well, in the extreme, investors stay away from markets. If I have no idea if this company is good or not, I will be away. I will not buy. If I have it, I will sell. <laughs> Cost of capital. If you have more risk, you will demand more for this. So what is the role of information? Basically, it's to reduce both the adverse selection and the moral hazard. I need to provide useful information because if I provide information and you will see when you are looking for a case study or you are looking at quantas, 
more or less, in some companies even higher, 50% of the company, uh, of the notes of the company is copy and paste from regulation. Is this useful? No. Doesn't say anything about the company. I could go to the law and have exactly the same. I need to provide useful information. Information that is relevant for the company. Information that is relevant for investors. Okay? And what about to reduce the moral hazard problem? For example, use net income as a managerial performance measure. How much are you earning? You will get 5% of this. The problem is <laughs> I'm able to manipulate this number. So if all my compensation is based on net income, I will have a huge incentive to put this, this uh, number up. So the more I get for the company, the more I get for me. Okay? And the problem is that the best measure of net income for reducing information asymmetry is not the best one to reduce the moral hazard. With net income, I want to provide information to investors to say, look, I'm doing good, or no, this year was horrible. The problem is, if this year was horrible, what is incentive for me just to show that this year was not so horrible because I will not get paid. So the best measure for reducing one problem of information asymmetry is not the best one to reduce the other problem. So we have to balance. Okay. So what we need is the standard setters. What are the standard setters? Are those regulatory bodies? that mediate between them, between shareholders and managers, by proposing laws, accounting laws. So you have the IFRS, you have the US GAPS, you have local GAPS. All of this is accounting regulation. That firms are supposed to meet this accounting regulation and to follow this accounting regulation so you can compare apples with apples. The problem is that the way that firms interpret this accounting regulation is different. The way that this accounting regulation is enforced in different countries is different. So it's not the same, for example, interpreting a firm that operates or is sitting in Italy or Spain than a firm that is in Australia. Why? Because the enforcement and the ethics are much higher in Australia, a priori, than in Italy and Spain. Again, a priori. So only knowing the country that the firm operates doesn't guarantee that this is going to happen. There are many, many things in Australia that do really bad things, and there are many, many things in Italy or Spain or Portugal that do really, really good things. So again, your job to go to financial statements and interpret this information, okay? So we need standard setters to mediate between these conflicts. We have here an income statement, and we have here the net income and the comprehensive income that is not the same. Which one I take? If I have to compensate the manager, which one I take? The profit after the taxes, comprehensive income, depends on the company. You have to analyze the company and see which is better. For example, here I have a huge amount of unrealized gain and losses of cash flow heads. 
So maybe in this case it's much more appropriate, this one, because it's less manipulated, or this one because I think that is, there is less manipulation here. So here is the financial performance for West Farmers Company from 2007 to 2011. And here is the executive remuneration, okay? That is more or less constant regarding to the group, the benchmark group. So if the benchmark group goes up but the remuneration is constant, it seems that I'm not, well, it may seem two things. I'm not remunerating well my manager management team because I'm not increasing this. Or second, it's because I'm not giving them incentives to manipulate accounting numbers, okay? So basically the remuneration package has this objective. Ownership and managers have to be aligned. Managers should look at long-term horizon in order to maximize first value, firm's value. But at the same time, I have to take into account that I have to compensate them short term because I compensate them now. And for them, there is a huge amount of risk if I put a lot of weight in the long term because even then, they, even if they do all their best, they don't know how good or bad the company is going to be. So I have to balance this. And there is a committee that advise them on remuneration. This is maybe one of the reasons because this is stability. And only having this remuneration committee gives a signal to the market that the incentive scheme is not doing with the purpose of manipulation. Because in most of the cases, who decides remuneration package? The manager. Just to avoid this problem, there was a law in the States and then in the UK and later on in other countries is that say on pay. That is, shareholders will say if they agree or not with the remuneration package of the management team. At least, at the end of the day, it's their money. So they, have to, they will need to say something. But the manager team has a lot of power just to set their own compensation. So having a remuneration committee that should be independent gives a signal that information may be less manipulated. So here we have annual incentives that are earnings-based and long-term incentives. So earnings-based incentives, like stock options, stocks. What is the incentive to manipulate earnings then? You have to look at the remuneration packets to know a lot about the accounting numbers. Why? Because I will provide information according to my incentives. If my incentives are based on earnings, I will have a huge, info, a huge amount of incentive to manipulate these earnings. If my remuneration doesn't have to do with earnings, what is the point? I will have other incentives, and we will go to this later. But the way that managers are remunerated is crucial to understand accounting numbers. Because at the end of the day, the managers are the ones that prepare the financial statements. Okay? So put in the feet of the of the managers for a moment what the information 
you are going to give this information that is according to the incentives to maximize your own profit. For example, uh, there is a question in the teaching evaluations that says, what is the effort that you put in this subject? What is your incentive to put a one there? There is no incentive at all. Of course you will choose six or seven. May or may not be true. I'm not discussing that. But your incentive to say that you didn't put any effort is zero. The same for the manager. If you are compensated based on earnings, you have to look very carefully at earnings. If you are compensated based, let's imagine, on assets because of you are interested in growing the company, you have to look very carefully on the assets of the company. This is going to give you the first signal on what's going on with accounting numbers and to be able to interpret them appropriately. Okay? So now I will give you just a brief introduction to the financial statements. So I have an investor. Could be any of you. Could be me. I have some savings, well, I wish. And I want to invest in a company. And there is a firm that needs some money because this firm wants to grow or want to invest in a project or a startup company that wants to grow or wants to start. So we have one side, people with money, the other side, friends needing money. And we have the intermediaries. Firms are looking for money, they go to investors to ask funds. And for that, they have to provide information. They could go directly or indirectly. Okay? For example, if you buy a share of a company, you will get information. Maybe, for example, look at Quantas. You have to do uh, the group assignment on Quantas. You have to download the financial statement of Quantas. You get this information. And then you will decide to invest or not. Or you can go to the bank or investment, investing fund and do exactly the same. And investors decide if they want to invest or not. If they want to invest, they will provide funds. Or they could do it with intermediaries. Sometimes the intermediaries are a way to reduce the risk as well, okay? And if I get funds as an investor, given that I gave to you some money, I want my money back, this is crucial, plus a return. And again, could be through intermediaries. And for all of that, we need accounting regulators. It's a way to back up the information that I'm providing. Why? Because it may increase reliability. If you say to me, I will give you $100, and I say to you, okay, I will give you back $100 and $10 extra on returns with no documents. Are you going to rely on me? No, of course not. But what about if we put it in writing? You are going to give me $100, and I will give you $100 plus 10. You will rely, but maybe a little bit more. 
There is something written, but it's not official. What about if you give me $100 and I will give you 110 and we take all these documents to a convention? Then yes, then there is no risk for you. The same with that. And even with that, still there is a minimum risk. For example, the convenience is not legal, could be, and everything is a fake. Happen, it happens. It happened with Enron, it happened with Parmalat, it happened with many, many firms. So still, even with accounting regulators, information has a little bit of risk. And again, one of the reasons is because accounting regulation is not a law. It's a way to account for transactions. The law has to come from the government, and each government put different enforcement level on this. And the penalties are different as well. Okay? And we have the auditors. But if you remember the case of Enron, most of the problem came from the auditor. So again, having an auditor is a warranty, but is not 100% sure that a company that uh, is audited is doing correctly. Because auditors also have information asymmetry. Auditors also have risk on the firm. They know what the managers let them know. Even they have more access to information than us as an investors, but they don't have full information. Maybe the only reason is because they cannot enter in the brain of the manager. So manager still knows more about the firm than auditors. So auditors can only say that this information or the information that I got from the company is reliable. But what about the information that I didn't? So again, auditors and accounting regulation reduce risk and guarantee that the market works, but it's not a 100% warranty. Okay? And it's because your role is important. You have to interpret the financial statements on your own. <laughs> and you have to be critical with all the information that you read. Okay? So for this uh, course, I know that uh, in some other courses you distinguish between them, but financial statements is going, is going to be the same of annual accounts and financial reports. I will put everything in the same bag, okay? I will not make any distinction. Are very useful for internal users. And the managers at different levels and for externals. Well, I don't know. I didn't do this any time in my life, but I should just to look for the financial statement of the company that you are working at to see if this company is going to be able to pay you. What about the risk of this company? This is important. As you may aware, but most of you don't, uh, will not be impacted in the case that it happens, there is a possibility of uni and uni of Adelaide that are going to be one uni. There is a lot of uncertainty. First, we don't know if it will happen or not. You as an student, what will happen in 2020? I paid for being graduated in uni of Adelaide, 70. The, I mean, you need to know all this information. Managers need to know this information well. They already know. But remember that the ones that do or prepare the statements are the ones that are at the top. But what about the managers at the different levels? Yeah. 
leaders of teams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They need to know this information as well, and has to be reliable. What if, for example, I say to my employees, work hard because you are going to get this and this and this, and later it's not possible. So all the information is useful, not only for externals, but also for externals. Even it's used primarily for externals. Like investment funds, financial analysts, lenders, investment banks. So. If you are here, I assume that your role is much more here as a financial analyst. You have to recommend people if buying or selling a company. And it's not so trivial. If you recommend to buy and you do your job wrong, there is going to be a lot of people losing a lot of money. The same if you recommend the others and the other I mean, just to sell the company. You cannot say buy or sell without analyzing properly the information. It's only one word, but it means a lot. Okay? So, I will skip that. And basically, what we are going to see is all the five financial statements, okay? That are the balance sheet, the income statement, the notes, cash flow statements, and a statement of change in equity. <coughs> Basically, the accounting numbers are here in the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statements, and a statement of change in equity. And the notes basically describe accounting numbers that are in the other four. So you have the numbers and you have the interpretation. Their interpretation. And you will find that most of the times you don't have enough information. You don't know about what's going on in the company and you have to read between lines. For example, <coughs> If you want to interpret the income statement, it's really crucial that you go to the remuneration note. Okay? If you want to pick some red flags about potential manipulation, you have to go to the income statement and cash flow statement to see the difference between them, and so on and so forth. So each of them is important, and the notes, from my perspective, is crucial. Accounting numbers, more or less, to give you an idea, represent 20% of the financial statements, and the notes represent 80% of the financial statements. So the notes are expanding these accounting numbers. And as I said, most of the time, they are basically copy and paste from regulation. So it's not very useful. So we have like three blocks, okay? One company invest money. One company, the same company, needs money. So first, I ask money, second, I invested money, and third, to make some money, to make some returns, I open it. Okay? This is the three blocks. Where do I know, where do I get information about investing in the balance sheet? There, I have the assets that could be long-term or short-term. Where do I get the information on how do I finance myself? In the balance sheet. How much debt I have. What is the equity proportion that I have. And also in the statements of shareholders' equity. Where do I know 
how firm is operating, where this information comes from, net income and cash flow. It's basically because here you will pick up the potential manipulation. Here it could happen as well. We will see later. But how firm operates is crucial because it could inflate accounting numbers or reduce accounting numbers. And for that, I have to go to the income statement and cash flow statement. But there are more information apart from that. I have the financial statements that are like the five blocks, but then I have the management discussion and analysis, where the manager says his or her point of view about the future of the firm. There we can have a lot of information because it's the manager's thoughts about the future of the firm, but they may want to oversell the future of the firm, or maybe not. Because, for example, let's say that <coughs> one company wants to buy me, maybe I will have a lot of incentive to undersell my company to say, no, no, don't buy me, I'm really crap. So, again, other information around is the crucial one to interpret well the financial statements. I also have the management report, auditor report. It's important to say if the auditor says that the company provides information that is reliable or not, or has a modified opinion, or a going concern. This gives me as well some information and some other information. If you Google Google or Apple, you will have, apart from the annual statements, a lot of information around that contains financial information as well. And this information sometimes is really crucial. Because remember that accounting information is static. It happens once per year, four times per year, or in more regular basis, but I could have accounting information in the news every single day. And to interpret all this information, we need everything. So there are quantitative and qualitative information. Quantitative basically is the financial statements. The qualitative is press releases, websites, the mission, incentives. Incentives are really, really important. The way because I move is because the incentive. Okay. So the main characteristics are they are accrual based. I will go to it uh, later when we see the cash flow statements. They are going concern. If there is a going concern about the future of the firm, the auditor will give me an audit uh, going concern opinion. There is a lot of regulation, but still there is a lot of flexibility and discretion. Only one rule, 100 firms apply this rule in a different way. Okay. Why? Because they are flexible. They don't say you have to do A, B, C, D, and E. They are flexible because otherwise maybe one rule will constrain my information or constrain the way that I do the business. One rule does not apply to all here in accounting. There is a symmetry conservatism and audit. And even with that, we have a lot of fraud cases that have been reduced over the years, but still there are a lot. During the financial crisis in the US, there were like 20, 30 per year. Well, we only know as an investor, case of like Enron, 
world scope, blah, 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 but there are much more. And basically, they are because they put like fake sales and, well, basically they invented some accounting numbers. <coughs> so basically, what is the purpose of the financial statements? What is the purpose of the accounting information? Provide information that is useful and reliable. Provide information about the firm. Okay? But for being reliable, for being useful, this information has to be relevant, has to say something, as I said before. Having a copy and paste from the regulation, this doesn't help me at all. Doesn't tell me any information about the company because it applies to every company. I want to know this company, okay? Relevance, reliability, why? Because if you say an information that is not true, what is the purpose of this information? Has to be reliable, has to be true information, comparable. If I say, you are told, I'm not saying anything. If you are saying, if I'm saying, you are taller than this one, you have in your mind, how is this one comparable with this one? But only one specific thing alone doesn't give me information. I have $100 in revenue, okay? This is good or bad? For being able to say if this is good or bad, I have to compare this revenue with the revenue of the firms in, for example, in the same industry. Then I will say, okay, 100 compared with 20, this is really good. Or 100 compared with 100,000, wow, what you, did you do this year? Comparable. One of the problems is that accounting information is not purely comparable. Because I don't know how the firm A interpreted the law compared to firm B. So I have to be careful with that. Understandable. One of the funny things is that I started now to put some numbers on how standable are the notes of the companies. There are some measures in linguistic that measure how difficult or easy it is to understand something that you read the first time. You cannot imagine how difficult they are to understand. They are like a black box. It's like, a, I don't know, a reading Shakespeare. So if I don't tell the information as the other people were three years old kids, what is the point? If I'm not clear, I will not be able to communicate. So every single information has to be relevant, reliable, comparable, understandable. And you can imagine that the four of them is almost impossible to get at the same time. So you have to decide, reliability or relevance, comparability or understandability, okay? For example, if I take the note regarding to taxes, obviously this note is going to be quite difficult to understand. But there are other notes that shouldn't be in that way, okay? So you have to understand that this is like the information, what you expect from the slides of a, of a lecture. That has to be relevant, going to the point. Don't give me 200 slides each time <coughs> because I may need to read them. No, my good, it's too much. 
go to the point. Reliable. Imagine if I will give you some slides with information that is not true. Comparable. Well, this is a little bit tricky in, in this example. Understandable. If I give you some material that you are not able to understand, what is the point here? And comparable in the sense that if I give you some information here, if you were studying in Italy or in China, you will have the same information. Okay? This is the most important thing. And then it's of the slides from now on gives you some specific information for each of the statements that are in the financial statement. And we will, well, we will come back in some lectures to this information. So this information is for you to have now in the case that you want to have a read, but we will come back later to this one, okay? So any question? Before I go, I would really appreciate if you give me some feedback on the quality of recording, because last year, for example, they told me that the quality of recording was not good, but they told me when the course finished, so it was not very useful, okay? So if you just uh, give me some feedback, it's going to be awesome, okay? So have a good week, and for those that have to present next week, if you have any question or any concern, anything, just let me know, okay? And please put some more names for next week, okay? I don't buy it, promise. Thank you. Have a good week.